الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي دروس الله Respected brothers, respected elders, mothers and sisters listening at home Insha'Allah Ta'ala in tonight's session of Dars Hadith We start afresh on the seerah of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala Umar is already here in front of me mashallah and so it is wise today that we start on the seerah of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an is from the tribe of Adi the tribe of Adi generally the Arabs are connected to two individuals Adnan and Qahtan Adnan and Qahtan and again the two tribes of Adnan and Qahtan are also the descendants of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu was salam the tribe of Amr ibn al-Khattab Adi is one clan from the Quraysh the Qurayshi people were dispersed into many many clans and tribes Adi was one clan or one tribe when we compare the ancestors of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an with the fathers of Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we see that Adi's brother's name was Murrah Adi's brother's name was Murrah and Murrah is one of the ancestors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the ulama have mentioned in the 8th degree of the forefathers Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab's lineage converges with the lineage of Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is the case with all the Arab tribes especially the Quraysh tribe the Quraysh were very very powerful people very powerful people they were the keepers of Kaaba and they would rule the city of Makkah basically anybody that came would deal with them first they were in control they were the supreme people at that time people would respect them and honor them Adi was a tribe that held a great position also it is said that they were given the responsibility of the diplomatic relationship between the other tribes so they were mediators, arbitrators if there was a fight between the tribes a disagreement or some political uh, new rules that were to be set in the city of Makkah the first people to be consulted was the people of Adi the tribe of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala one of the reason is that Allah had blessed them with knowledge very few were literate in the city of Makkah and the people of Adi were literate people that is why Mu'arrikhin have mentioned that very few amongst the companions ashab kiram could read and write and from amongst the few was one Umar ibn al-Khattab he was a literate man he could read and he could write 
because he was from the tribe of Adi. So that responsibility was given to uh, that particular clan Adi. When we look at the grandfather of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, whose name was Nufail bin Abdul Uzza, Nufail bin Abdul Uzza, a very important character, Nufail bin Abdul Uzza. Nufail bin Abdul Uzza was a man highly respected, highly respected. In fact, the scholars have written that when a feud broke out between Abdul Muttalib and Harab bin Umayyah as to who would take the leadership of Quraysh between Abdul Muttalib and Harab bin Umayyah who would take the leadership of Quraysh it was Nufail bin Abdul Uzza the grandfather of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab who was put in charge as an arbitrator and he was to decide who is to take that position and after hearing from both the two individuals who were senior people in the Qurayshi tribe he gave his final decision in favor of Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Muttalib is the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. so that position that was given to Abdul Muttalib was actually from Hazrat Amr ibn al-Khattab's grandfather Nufail bin Abdul Uzza and from the mother's side from the mother's side Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was also related to the great Khalid bin Walid Hazrat Khalid bin Walid there is some relationship inshallah ta'ala if Allah wills we will try to connect all uh, the, 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 the maternal side and the paternal side inshallah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills this man Nufail bin Abdul Uzza he had two sons one was Khattab Khattab and the other one was Amr 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 was a simple man he did not rise to the level of his brother Khattab Khattab became a prominent leader of Quraysh the father of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala and Umar ibn al-Khattab and Amr was a simple man but his son was a very powerful man a well distinguished young man in Arabia at that time the reason for that the ulama have written is that he was a muwahid in his early days he completely renounced idolatry whilst in Makkah al and in fact this was even before Nabuwat was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam so this man Zaid the son of Amr and Amr the son of Nufail so Zaid is the cousin brother of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an he was given the gift of speech mashallah very eloquent person when he would sit in a gathering he would speak out to the people and inform them that what you are worshipping this idolatry this is a deviation you have gone the wrong way astray you have turned away from the teachings of your forefathers Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam so he was on the tartib of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam he was an Ibrahimi in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he had a group slowly that followed him and took him to be a teacher and all of them were muwahidun they did not do shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now when Khattab looked at the attitude of his nephew how he would speak out it was difficult for Khattab Khattab was a powerful man highly influential in the city of Makkah a very strong minded person of strong character he was not going to take anything from his nephew Zaid it is said that he made life extremely difficult for Zaid every time he was propagating Tawheed to the people Khattab would be there when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was propagating Iman and Tawheed 
Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab and Utba and Uqba and all of them would be there. They knew exactly, that is why. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to visit Abu Talib and he was breathing his last and he said to his uncle, Kulla ilaha illallah. Oh my dear uncle, all I want you to say is La ilaha illallah and that is it. Before Huzur alayhi salatu was salam got into the room, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab and all of them were already there. And they were taunting Abu Talib and they said to Abu Talib, you choose the religion of your nephew and renounce the religion of your forefathers. And this hadith is in Bukhari. And he looked at Abu Jahl and, and he said to Abu Lahab, no, I am on the religion of my forefathers. And that is how he died. Subhanallah. So it was difficult for uh, this young man, Zaid, to propagate Tawheed in the city of Makkah. Eventually, he was ostracized from the city of Makkah, forced to get out. People were no longer talking to him. The ulama have mentioned he would live on the outskirts of Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. Makkah to Al-Mukarramah surrounded, is surrounded by mountains. Subhanallah, it is said that before revelation also, he took refuge in the cave of Hira. He took refuge in the cave of Hira. And it was this cave of Hira that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the first wahi to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be revealed on him. So he was living on the outskirts. Occasionally he would come again with his Tawheed. But it was this man, Khattab, all the time stopping Zaid. The reason why I'm mentioning this is just to put in front of you how the people were at that time, and especially the, the family members of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, when was he born? The ulama have mentioned that he was born 11 years after Amul Fil. Scholars have different opinion, but one sound opinion is that he was born 11 years after Amul Fil. Amul Fil is the year of the elephants. The very famous event that had taken place the year when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born, when Abraha came with elephants with the intention to demolish the Kaaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended the four walls of al haramain al-Sharifain with birds, small birds, chote chote parinde. And they were pelting pebbles at the elephants and the entire army of Abraha was killed. That is Amul Fil. So 11 years after Amul Fil. So how old was Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given Nabuwat. How old was he? 29. He was 29 years of age when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 40. Now again, there have been some scholars who have given a different opinion with regards to the age of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. But this is one very sound opinion. Before we uh, start the seerah of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, I think it is very very important for us to have this mental picture of how Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an looked like. Subhanallah, a, a unique individual. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him with great status. It is said that he was a very tall man, a towering figure, towering figure, someone who would stand out. So if he came to the masjid, people would know straight away that Umar ibn al-Khattab is on the side, they are praying salah. A very tall man, a towering figure. In fact, the scholars have described him that if he was in in the midst of a group of people, it would be as if though Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab is riding on his mount while the rest are standing. But in reality, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab is just standing. So he would be there. 
conspicuous, he would just be visible for everyone. Say, one great Buzrug, mashallah, he saw Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an in his dream and had an opportunity to speak to him. And I said to him, describe me how Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was. And these are the same words what he said to me. A man extremely tall. It is said that the bones were full of flesh, very muscular, a lot of muscles, large uh, hands and feet, mashallah, very, very strong. And another thing for the brothers who don't have a lot of hair on their head, Sayyidina Amr ibn al Khattab was also bold. Sayyidina Amr ibn al Khattab was also bold. But the difference is that he was a very handsome man. Though he had no hair, but a very handsome man. A lot of people worry a lot. Subhanallah. Why meri tara pagri pehen lo fikar hi nahi. Meri tara pagri pehen lo fikar hi nahi. Once my wife said to me, why don't you have long zulfa? I said, what will you see in my long zulfa? You can see my amama, that is sufficient, long zulfa. So short hair. As an Umar ibn al-Khattab had no hair. But very handsome. Subhanallah. There was a lot of noor. The ulama have mentioned that he was fair skinned with uh, some redness mixed in, in that uh, fairness. Very white and red. That is Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. As for the mustache, the sunnah is, and we, we touched on this uh, in our Darsi Quran session on a Wednesday The sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is to trim your mustache And to trim it in such a way that at least The ulama have mentioned That the skin is visible That the skin is visible A lot of the people have a thick mustache And that is against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Remember uh, what is known as jarasim. Jarasim ko kya kate? Bacteria. Uh, you got hair here and then you've got jarasim bacteria. And when you are eating the lukma, with the lukma, you've got jarasim and bacteria going inside you. So the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to trim the mustache so that the, the, the skin is visible. In the case of Amr ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, it is said that at the lower section of the mustache, the lower section of the mustache, there were some loose hair on the lower section of the mustache, just there, yaha niche, not on the top, just at the bottom here. And when he would get angry, he would often touch the loose hair of the mustache here, just like that, and that he is angry. So this was a sign of Hazrat Amr al Khattab's. Radiallahu ta'ala ans anger. You get some people with a big mustache and they you know they want to hide everything and curl everything. That is against the sunnah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you remember some uh, Persians came to visit Huzur Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, they had a long mustache and they they, they had no beard. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them that what kind of a face have you got? You haven't got a beard and you've got long mustache. And they said that this is what our Lord commands us to do, as in their kings. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, My Rabb has commanded me to lengthen the beard and to trim the mustache. This is the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ulama have mentioned also that when he would speak it was clearly understood. When he would speak, it was clearly understood. And when he would walk, he would walk very fast. Another thing what the ulama have mentioned is when he would hit anyone, it would hurt. When he would hit anyone, it would hurt. He was famous. The ulama have mentioned that Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab was the famous wrestler of Arabia. He was a wrestler. And he would challenge the people annually in the Uqaz fair. The Uqaz fair, 
that would take place in the vicinity of Arafat annually. So you had the great wrestlers of Arabia coming there and displaying their strength and power and courage. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab would be there. And everyone would fear him. They would not want to fight Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. So a man who was very, very strong, very powerful man, subhanallah al So much so, my respected brothers, it is mentioned that it's all about the personality. He had that intimidating personality. Once he was walking in the streets of Madinatul Munawwara and a lady came in front of Hazrat Amr ibn al-Khattab and she was pregnant. Hamilati. The ra'b, the awe, the personality, the physique of Hazrat Amr ibn al-Khattab was such because she was pregnant and she saw the face of Hazrat Amr ibn al-Khattab she got so scared that straight away a miscarriage took place. A miscarriage took place. All the companions gathered, gathered around and they said to Umar ibn al-Khattab, well, this is Umar ibn al-Khattab, he has to pay the blood money now. The blood money. So Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and said, what blood money? I haven't done anything. And you tell me I have to pay blood money? And some of the companions said, no. This lady saw you and this is what has happened. Until Ali radiallahu ta'ala an came. Ali radiallahu ta'ala an said that this was unintentional. Why should Umar ibn al-Khattab have to pay blood money? What has he done wrong? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an then paid that lady blood money from Baytul Mal, the Islamic treasury. Gave her the blood money, but not from the pocket of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. So this was Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. It is said when the disbelievers would see him, their knees would shake. Their knees would literally shake. Subhanallah. We talk about Hazrat Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala. Well, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala is in a different league. In a very different league, my respected brothers and elders. Masha Allah, the ulama have also mentioned that with this aggression, a very strong character, another unique quality of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab was the fact that he was a very compassionate, loving person, a very humble man, and very easily tears would flow from his eyes. He would weep a lot and he would cry a lot. This is a sign of a man who's got a soft heart. Jiska dil naram hota hai, to aansu bhi jaldi behbadde hai. Soft hearted man. So at the time when Sharia demanded anger, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab would show his anger. And when Sharia demanded love and affection, subhanallah, that was the other side of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala this is why when the companions complained to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq and said that how can you appoint Amr ibn al-Khattab as a Khalifa, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq said that I will answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have left the best amongst the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a leader for the Muslimin, the best man. And that was Amr ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala subhanallah al uh, just to mention about his humility and who this man was it is said that when khilafat was given to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala once he came to the city of Makkah al and he was in the desert of Makkah when he was in the desert of Makkah he stood up and he looked at the desert and he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, La ilaha illallah, al aliyul azim, al mu'ati, ma yasha li may yasha, ma yasha li may yasha. He said to the companions around him, 
that once upon a time Umar ibn al-Khattab would roam in the desert of Makkah. A task was given to him by the father Khattab that he has to graze the camel. So Umar ibn al-Khattab was, would do his duty to graze the camels of the father. The father was a very hard character person. He would exhaust uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab to hard labor. And when he was tired and he wanted to rest, the father would stand up and he would literally beat up Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. And he said to the people around him, and this echoed in the desert of Makkah al once my father said to me, O oh, Umar, you are good for nothing. O oh, Umar, you are good for nothing. What are you? You are nothing. Like I said, the people of Adi were literate people. Subhanallah. But he proved his father wrong. The father once said to him that if you can't graze and look after my animals, how will you be a noble leader of the Quraysh? And today, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab said, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. Al-Aliyu al-Azim, Allah is the most high. Al-Mu'ti, he is the one who is the giver. Ma yasha'u liman yasha'u And he gives what he wants to whom he wills. And today, there is no one between Umar ibn al-Khattab and his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah has given that power to Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he was praying, Hazrat, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the honor and maqam and status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. It is said once Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an sat on the member of Masjid Nabwi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gathered all the people and he said to them, listen to me very carefully. And the masjid was full. <laughs> All the companions gathered in Masjid Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to you, and he said to them that I won't take much of your time. Do you know who Umar is? Umar was a man who would graze the camels of his aunt. The aunt was a wealthy lady. And he said to the people, all day long I would look after the camels of my aunt and in return what would she give me? A handful of dates. All day in the heat I would look after the camels of my aunt and in return she would give me a handful of dates. This is Umar ibn al-Khattab. And saying that he said, وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen And he sat down. Hazrat Abdurrahman bin Auf came to him and said, Amirul Mu'mineen, why do you want to belittle yourself in front of the companions? Why do you want to belittle yourself? Why do you have to say this? Subhanallah, the humility, the modesty. You see, my respected brothers, we have, mashaAllah, Amama, we have the beard, uh, when someone is to look at us, MashaAllah, that person is very pious. He performs his salah. He gives his charity. But the internal condition of the heart is very different. And the companions were free from them. They were pure. And he said to Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Woe to you, Abdul Rahman. The reason why I sat on the mimbah and spoke out to the people, is that my nafs was playing tricks on me. My nafs was saying to me, Oh Umar, now you are a great man. Oh Umar, now you are Amir al Oh Umar, now you are the Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the reason I sat on the mimba, so that I can reflect and remind myself who Umar ibn al-Khattab really was. That is the reason I wanted to make it clear to the people that Umar ibn al-Khattab was a simple man. Subhanallah al In the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, and this, is, this hadith is recorded in Sunan al-Tirmizi, 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لك كان فيما قبلكم من الامم محدثون that in the previous ummah there were people who were known as muhaddasun who were known as muhaddasun fa in yaku ahadun fa in yaku ahadun fi ummati fa innahu umar and if anyone was a muhaddas in my ummah then it would have been umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu ta'ala what is the meaning of muhaddas my respected brothers the ulama have mentioned muhaddas means that person who is inspired directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is as if though truth naturally flows from the tongues as if the malaika are there feeding him information and so whatever he decides and whatever he says it is nothing but the truth uh, subhanallah that is muhaddas so in the previous ummah you had people who were inspired and so whatever they would say it was the truth rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if ever there was a muhaddas in my ummah it would have been hazrat umar ibn al khattab that is why in another hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna allah ta'ala ja'al al haqqa ala lisan umar wa kalbihi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed truth on the tongue of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala on the tongue and also in the heart. In another hadith again uh, recorded by Imam Tirmizi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned لَوْ كَانَ بَعْدِي نَبِيٌّ لَكَانَ عُمَرْ لَوْ كَانَ بَعْدِي نَبِيٌّ لَكَانَ عُمَرْ If after me Nabu what was to continue then it would have been Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala why he had all the attributes and the qualities of anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam in his system he had all the attributes of anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam inside him so if there was a continuation of Nabu what surely Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab would have been that individual and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even gave an example. And he looked at Umar ibn al-Khattab and he said that Umar is like Nuh alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam. Umar ibn al-Khattab is like Nuh alayhi salam and Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam. Both the companion, the, both Anbiya alayhi salatu wa sallam in their nature, they had aggression in them. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam made dua against the people but dua cursed them and Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam was a man again very strong in his character. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam sunnah was to hold the asa and the sunnah of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab was also to hold an asa. So he would walk with the asa and at times he would hold a whip in his hand. That is why uh, there's a proverb in the Arabic language that the whip of Umar ibn al-Khattab is sharper than the sword of the companions. The whip of Umar ibn al-Khattab is sharper than the sword of the companions. This is Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. Insha'Allah ta'ala, Allah wills, we will continue on the seerah of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an in the next session. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Just one important announcement. I have forgotten to say this. Inshallah, next week, the Hadith session will be postponed. I have a program uh, in London, uh, Masjid Abu Bakr. We have a Sirat conference there, so I have to go there. So, just for next week, the session will be postponed. Inshallah, it will continue uh, the week after. Durush al Palla. اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وسلم تسليما اللهم تقبل منا وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم نستغفرك ونتوب اليك نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سمعنا وطانا غفرانك ربنا واليك المصير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين